today is a lot windier than I was expecting. And the reason why I was expecting it to be a lot less windy was because the weather forecast said three to five mile per hour winds. I crossed over the bridge earlier and there's white caps on the river. So I pulled up into this inlet and I'm gonna fish here for now because this little cove right here is somewhat hidden from where the wind is blowing. So we're gonna rig up and I don't really have anything in mind. Honestly, I'm just out here because it's a beautiful day out. We've got bluebird skies, it's about 50 degrees and I'm just feeling springy. We're gonna try and catch whatever is willing to bite. But I do have all of my camping stuff. So I've got extra clothes in here. I've got my sleep system, tents, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, everything I need to camp overnight. And this yellow tote over here, this is all my cooking stuff. And then there's a red tote in between these two yellow totes, which is all my food. The thing I love most about this type of fishing is this type of fishing is very inexpensive. So I just rigged up one of my spinning rods. And even though I say inexpensive, this is one of my more expensive rods, but there are numerous options out there where you can buy for $20, $30. You don't have to use what I'm using here. For example, I have one of my ugly sticks there. Ugly sticks would serve you just fine. The point is you just want a rod and a reel. I'm running six pound mono as my main line and what I tied on for my rig is a very simple three-way rig. And all that is, is I have my main line tied to a swivel here. And then on the same eye that my main line is tied to, I have a small or a short leader tied to a size six bait holder hook. And then on the other eye of the swivel, I have a 12 inch leader tied to a one ounce bank sinker weight. And all we're gonna do for bait with this rig is night crawlers. So we have the hook here and we have our box of night crawlers here. We're just gonna hook a chunk on there. That's our rig. Springtime is often a weird time here because you don't have a lot of options. A lot of the lakes are awkward right now because they have a small layer of ice on top which you can't ice fish from and you also can't fish from shore. So there's that. And then you have the rivers, but when it comes to the rivers, there's not too many fish that are accessible from shore like how I'm fishing today. And so I don't really know we're going to catch much. The water is really high. Normally when I come here, you can actually access a small part of this flat right by the water's edge. But because of all the snow runoff, the water has risen up quite a bit. So instead of being able to fish right by the water's edge, we'll just fish from up top. Oh, these are the green night crawlers. I didn't even read green worms. Oh well, I hope the fish don't mind a dyed worm. Got my chunk of worm on. We'll just cast this out. Ooh, that is a lot farther than I was anticipating. Okay. You know what? Maybe I can just sit right here water is decently cold not too cold so rocky I'm gonna sit facing this way because the wind's blowing like this so that the wind doesn't mess up the audio too much, hopefully. The issue with having the wind like this is sometimes it can be a little hard to detect what's a bite on your rod and what's just the wind.
Needless to say, fishing hasn't been that great. So we're gonna shift focus. This is something I just encourage people to do. First off, just don't litter so we don't have to do this in the first place. But if you do come across litter, just, you know, carry some trash bags or little bags like this in your vehicle so that you can help clean up and make the place a nicer place. Let's hope I don't fall in the water here. Ooh, that is some not so good looking stuff in there. Shotgun shells? What are people even shooting here? Ducks? A lot of shotgun wads here. Clean this stuff up. Oh, there's some right here. That does not look like good stuff. Man, I don't even know if this bag is gonna fit all of this. Man, there's a lot of garbage right here. Coffee. And this is a broken glass coffee bottle right here. There's a lot more garbage here than I thought. I might have to go get a second bag. A flashlight. Okay, I need to go grab a second bag. This thing filled up in like a matter of two minutes. I did not realize that 
with just the amount of trash in this spot, it was gonna fill up two whole bags. A couple months ago, I just bought these Onyx work gloves and they're like a heavy duty glove so that you can do work. So picking up garbage like this, you don't have to use your hands and maybe there's a log block in the road and you gotta cut it down. Having a pair of heavy duty work gloves like this in the truck can go a long way. So I'm gonna leave this open just like this because we're not going far. I'm just going right across to go drop off the garbage. One thing right now is I am starving. I only ate breakfast, ate a small breakfast. And then right across over here by those silos, there's a dumpster. So I'm gonna go dump this garbage and then we're gonna go cook. Picking up garbage is as easy as that. It's not hard. Hmm. I want to find the flattest spot. by the highway but we do have a guard there i've never really fished this spot in the spring so this looks a lot more different than what i'm used to in the summer water's higher and a lot of ducks that's actually a lot of ducks a lot of green heads geese all the waterfowl you could ask for so the reason why i pulled up to the spot is because Got the water's edge right here. I've got my truck right here so I can cook out of my truck and not have to do any sh I have no bell in here. What? Ah. Found it. So tonight, I am banking on the idea that it's not going to rain. It looks a little sketchy right now, but fingers crossed it doesn't rain. The reason why I'm hoping it doesn't rain is because I'm actually planning to sleep in the trunk of my bed and I don't have a canopy. And I don't think I want to sleep with my cover covered up. So I'm going to most likely sleep with this part exposed, which hopefully, like I said, it doesn't rain and I don't get wet. So I'm going to pull these totes out. I believe this is my sleeping bag. Yep. So my sleep stuff is in here. I got a new sleeping bag. Steve actually bought me a new sleeping bag and he bought the sleeping bag I've been wanting for a couple years now. He's a good friend, so it's brand new. It still has the tags on it and it's still in the plastic bag. So it's a zero degree bag. So the best way to test how good a sleeping bag is, is to sleep in a position where you're most exposed, which in this case, right here. This is all my extra clothes. And then the red toe here is food. Yes, so we got potatoes, chips, and seasoning you know instant easy to make food and then in here this is all my like actual cooking equipment so we've got a like, cutting board pan cups propane a burner ziploc bags etc so i think how i'm eventually going to do this is i'm going to take one of these totes out and leave it on the ground and then i'm going to push the other two totes to the side and then I'll have one side for me to lay down and sleep.
I already know that's the best. Simple lunch. You guys see me do this meal plenty of times. We got instant mashed potatoes. We've got blacktail meat. We got some onion, baby lettuce, and baby greens. Now, it would be very nice if a fish cooperated and committed to my worm so that we can cook the fish up too. But for now, I think blacktail with greens and potatoes and onion, that'll suffice. But while we're cooking, during the springtime like this, this is when you typically see the most wildlife, abundant wildlife in terms of, oh, I'm getting bit right now. Oh. Oh, I was just talking. I was just talking how about All right, well, we'll leave this rod chilling for the moment. That was a big hit. The bell was going off there. Anyway, back to what I was saying. During the springtime like this, it's a good time to scout and just kind of see where these deer like to winter. And also, it's a good time to go shed hunting because a lot of times by now, bucks have dropped their antlers. We've got a new pair of Vortex Razor UHD 8x42s testing out the 8 power for turkey season because perhaps maybe there's something I'm missing with 8 power binoculars rather than 10. And you kind of want to really pour out the potatoes here like bit by bit because if you do it too much sometimes it'll bunch up and the water can't get to all of the dry parts. Slowly just fill in wherever there's still a lot of liquid. And that's basically it, instant mashed potatoes. onion out of here. I was just testing to see if it was ready. Ooh, that smells so good. This is the black tail that I shot with Colin and Jason down in Oregon just last year in 2023. And that buck, fun fact for you, he came back aged at eight and a half years old. My plate covering my potatoes just went flying. But that buck that I shot in, in 2023 in Oregon was eight and a half years old. And even though he's as old as he is, this meat right here, you would never guess that he was that old of a deer. Like super tender, just no gaminess, just a delicious animal. Very thankful for him.
Oh, that is perfect. Quick little lunch. Hopefully we catch a fish. Instant mashed potatoes, blacktail with Montreal steak seasoning, fried onion, jalapenos, greens. Gatorade to go alongside lunch. Is that lunch? It's like four o'clock, 4.30. Is that still considered lunch? Or is that considered dinner? Blacktail meat, onion, and try to get a jalapeno here. Jalapeno. Man, blacktail is just so mild. That's the best way I can explain blacktail. Especially when you just cook it to what I consider perfection like that. It just goes so good with fried onions like that and then mashed potato and greens. And then you add scenery like this. Beautiful spring sunny day. Can't ask for much more other than a selfish wish for a fish. Whoa, I, I think I have a fish. Or am I just, am I losing my mind here? This feels a lot heavier than just my weight. I don't feel anything fighting. No, I have a fish. Got myself a a pea mouth. Nice. Sun has gone down and never even heard a bell. Just got him on the lip. He hooked himself. I didn't even do anything. I'm gonna keep him, cut him up, and since it's nighttime, use him as cut bait. Try to catch a catfish. Brand new sleeping bag. I'll blow up one of my sleeping pads. this thing out so that while we do stuff the loft will be ready for us oh yeah that's how I'm gonna sleep tonight I don't think it's gonna rain tonight because I do see some stars but down here uh, you just don't know man a storm can just roll in whenever normally when I go for catfish I like to use like a 4 aught circle hook but since it's dark and I don't want to retie, I'm just using the same exact rig setup 
as the one that I caught my whitefish. So I cut off that piece towards the tail because it's slightly smaller and I just have it barely holding on by the skin. The skin is the toughest part. So as long as you have some skin up and over your hook, you should be all right. It is pitch black, so I can't even see what I'm casting. I just know the water's out this way. So off she goes. Heard a splash. Driftwood, which is wood that's just been drifting along the river, is often the driest wood. So if you can find dry pieces of driftwood like this, they're usually very easy to light. First impressions with the Stone Glacier Chokyu sleeping bag. I love it. I haven't gotten all inside of it, but my legs are in it and it's really warm the fluffiness or loftiness of this sleeping bag is exactly what i thought it was going to be very lofty and it's very warm this is a zero degree bag and i think tonight we're going to get down to like maybe 30 just right around the freezing mark if even it's a little tight in the back of my truck because i have my tunnel cover i'm leaning up against it right now but my head is eventually going to go under here if you are just drowning in work or that city life, find a day or two to just take some time off and go camping. Do something similar to what I'm doing now. It will really nourish your soul. I promise you that. New day, new fish. It's a beautiful morning. The wind has died off substantially. When I went to bed last night, the wind picked up a little bit and then I can feel the effects of that wind because my face right now, I can tell it it hurts a little because my skin is so dry. So I'm happy that the wind is gone. Even though the wind picked up, there was no rain, which I'm very thankful for. So I had my head under my tunnel cover here and that works good and bad because it makes it a lot darker than it normally is. And usually when your face gets hit by the sun earlier, you tend to wake up earlier, but because this was like a sunshade for me, I slept in a little bit, but that's okay because we're out here to relax and have fun. First impressions of the sleeping bag. I really like it. Didn't really get cold throughout the night despite having the wind just coming in here. Uh, I did have some cold spots whenever I had like my knee pressed up against the entire bag because you know, when, as soon as you compress down, it loses its loft and it's not as warm. But other than that, very happy with the sleeping bag and it's really roomy. So I never felt once that I was, you know, squeezed too much in a bag. There are some droplets of water here, but that's because of condensation, not rain. Everything this morning was just damp with uh, dew. So 
kind of laying it out so that it can dry out by the sun or dry out from the sun. Just a small garbage bag today. That's all she wrote. Appreciate you guys joining me on this trip. Just a quick overnighter, but it was much needed. We even caught a fish, so I can't complain. I'm headed off home. I am about to go home, redress, and hit the Bighorn Show in Spokane, and then find another time to do this again. Thanks for watching, guys.